Uh, hi, this is Yu Fan Huang, and today I'm going to introduce some recent results on density subhypergraph. Uh, okay. So first, what are graphs and hypergraphs, and why do we want to study them? Uh, basically, graphs and hypergraphs they are mathematical models, which are capable of modeling interactions between different objects, and um, in a normal graph, each edge can connect two vertices, and in a hypergraph, each hyperedge can connect multiple vertices. So hypergraphs are general, are natural generalizations of graphs for modeling higher order relations. And uh, these graphs and hypergraphs are super common in the real world. Here I give a few examples. And how do people usually analyze these graphs and hypergraphs? One common perspective of graph data analysis is trying to find the extreme or special structures in graphs or hypergraphs. And there are a lot of different examples. Here I list two. The first one is the most classical one, like the minimum cut, where you want to find a smallest set of edges, which separates the graph into two components. And here I give one example on the Sacris Karate Club social network, where I find the smallest set of edges separates the, separating the instructor, instructor node and the president, president node. And another example is the density subgraph, which will be the focus of this presentation. So basically density subgraph is trying to find a vertex set S, which maximizes the fraction between the number of edges fully containing this set S and the size of S. Here I give one example on the network science collaboration network. So the red set is the density subgraph in this network. And the motivation for studying density subgraph is that a lot of graph communities, they are usually very internally well connected. In other words, they are very dense. So the density subgraph objective can capture these structures. And density subgraph is poly polynomial time solvable. And along the past four decades, it, there has been a lot of different variants of it. So since there are numerous variants of density subgraph, can we have a unified view of these problems? Uh, recently, Chakuri, Kwangrud, and Torres, they provide a unified view of these problems. Basically, they consider the densest supermodular subset problem, which maximize the fraction Fs divided by the size of S. So here, F is a set function defined for any vertex set. And F is assumed to be non-negative, normalized, and supermodular. And there are two properties of, C, of this objective. First, it's super general, so it covers a lot of different variants of density subgraph. And second, this objective can be efficiently solved. So it can be solved exactly via some modular minimization or approximately by greedy algorithms. And our first contribution is that we consider an even broader class a class of problems, which is called density super modular subset with possible negative values, or in short, DSS envy. Basically, we are still optimizing the same objective, but here we drop the assumption that F is non negative. So, this simple extension will include more variants of density subgraph. Here, I list two examples to illustrate it. Uh, one is the density subgraph with sparse cut, and it's other one is the anchor density subgraph. And we make two non-trivial observations of this problem. So first, we show that DSS envy can actually be reduced to the original densest supermodular subset problem. So this means any exact algorithm for the densest supermodular subset problem remains exact for DSS envy. However, the picture of approximation algorithms is different. So we show by one counter example that many simple approximation algorithms, such as greedy peeling, they will lose the approximation guarantee if you apply it naively to the 
GSSMV problem. Our second contribution is that we propose an empirically faster algorithm for DSSMV. So DSSMV is basically uh, maximizing some frictional and uh, the classical appro approach for this frictional programming is to binary search the answer beta and then turn this maximization problem into a decision problem. So now we only need to efficiently answer the decision problem that whether there exists a vertex set such that fs divided by the size of s is at least beta. If we can answer it efficiently, then we just binary search beta. And when the search range is really small, then we can terminate the procedure. And we, we tackle this problem from a different perspective and propose a super simple and neat framework called density improvement. Basically, instead of binary searching the answer, we try to improve the answer iteration by iteration. So in the current iteration, we will try to find a better solution than the previous iteration. If we can do it, then the answer is improved, right? Otherwise, then we can certify, oh, the current solution is actually the optimum. Then we can stop. So this is super simple and intuitive. And although there is an exponential number of possible vertex sets in a graph, we can show that this procedure will only last for at least ON steps. So it means this algorithm is strongly poly polynomial. Uh, although this bound may look really bad, but uh, in practice, it uh, converges very quickly. So here we provide some empirical perf performance study. So we pick two special cases of DSSMV, the most classical one, the densest subgraph and the densest subhypergraph. And uh, we run them on five graphs and five hypergraphs. We compile our density improvement framework with a standard binary search. And we can see on all the graphs and hypergraphs, our framework will take less wall time and the number of subproblems it requires to solve is also much smaller. And our third contribution is that we study an object, uh, an localized, a localized density subhypergraph objective, and we propose the, some corresponding algorithm to solve them. So first, let, let me motivate it. So let me introduce what are localized graph algorithms. So basically, localized graph algorithms are trying to find some special structures near some local region uh, indexed by some reference set R. Here on the left, left hand side, I give one example. So let's say we are looking for the density subgraph. Uh, the global optimum here is a blue set. But if we are interested in the local region around the reference set marked in orange, then we may output the yellow set since it's closer to the local region. So by choosing different reference sets, then we can find a lot of like very diverse dense structures. And uh, why do we want to study localized graph algorithms? Here I listed two main motivations. The first one is a lot of like global optimums or approximated global optimums. They are trivial or limited. So here I do some simple experiments. I solve the density subgraph exactly on 10 graphs from the SNAP data set. And uh, from the result, we can see most of the densest subgraphs, they are really small. So taking usually taking less than 1% of the whole graph. So this means like if you only compute the global optimum, then you will get super limited information, right? And the second uh, motivation is about uh, computing complexity. So nowadays graphs are growing larger and larger and many graph algorithms, they do not scale up to moderate or large size graphs. So if we can design some localized graph algorithms, which only pay attention to a local region, then potentially we don't have to visit the whole graph. Then we can make it super efficient, right? So the objective we consider is called anchor density subhypergraph. So basically it's still density subhypergraph 
but it tends to include verses from the reference set R more likely. Uh, so the way to achieve this is that we will add some penalties for including verses outside R into the final answer S. So if you want to add some verses outside the reference set, you need to incur some penalties. And uh, the penalty is proportional to the vertex degree, since we want to encourage fairness and diversity. And also we, we add some parameter to control the locality. Here we denote it as epsilon. So if epsilon equals to zero, then this objective will degenerate to the uh, like classical densis subhypergraph objective. So there is no locality at all. But if epsilon is infinity, then you won't include any verses outside R. So you, ca you can control the trade-off. And we make three observations. So first, this objective is a special case of DSS, a DSS MV we proposed, and we can solve it using density improvement framework. Also, the, sub, the decision sub problem can be casted into a minimum hyper ST cut problem and uh, further be reduced to a minimum graph ST cut problem, since here is some really nice structure allows this reduction. Third, when the locality uh, like locality degree is strong enough. So here, like when epsilon is at least one, we can actually design a strongly local algorithm whose running time only depends on the reference, the size of the reference set instead of the whole graph. So it can make, make the algorithm really e efficient. Uh, to showcase the potential usage of our objective, we perform some case, some case study on an EDO domain hypergraph. So we extract an EDO domain hypergraph from the web graph by uh, creating one hyper edge for all the domains interacting with a specific host. And uh, on the left side, there are some statistics, statistics about this hypergraph. And if we compute the global optimum, like for density subhypergraph, then the result is super unsurprising. It basically contains the top US universities plus Oxford and Cambridge. So it brings you limited information. But our tool enable you to dig out more diverse structures. So here we display using heat maps, the anchor density subhypergraphs anchored on UK domains and Chinese domains. And you can see we find different dense sets. And more interestingly, if you intersect these two dense sets, you can actually find, find a denser set. So this showcase set, we can combine the results of different den uh, anchor density subgraph to dig out a lot of dense structures. And uh, here are some future directions. The first one is, uh, we want to explore more ways of encoding locality. Right now, people are mainly using degree and distance, but uh, they, they both have their own limitations. And secondly, as I mentioned, approximation algorithms will lose approximation guarantees for DSSMV. So it's really interesting if we can design some fast approximation algorithm for, for them. Uh, thanks for listening. If you are interested, you can take a look at the paper and uh, the code is published. Thanks.